In this video, we'll explain some of the key differences between mirrorless and DSLR cameras, and we'll help you understand how your camera's internal shutter mechanism can help you produce some very creative effects in your photography. Understanding your camera's anatomy is crucial for getting creative control in your shots, so let's get started. Each lens that we attach to the camera does the job of collecting light from our scene and focusing it into an image in the back of our camera. This image is then captured on a light-sensitive image sensor located in the back of the camera. You may have seen your image sensor before, especially if you've got a mirrorless style camera like my Olympus here. That greenish blue surface that's in the back there is where the magic happens, so to speak. That's where your picture is actually made. As you can imagine, no one sensor fits all cameras, and in today's market you'll find small, medium, and large sensors inside cameras of varying sizes and shapes. Cameras with larger sensors require larger lenses that project a big enough image to cover the sensor's surface area completely. Good arguments can be made for both larger and smaller sensor cameras, but let's stick with the camera anatomy for the moment and explain something else that we see inside the camera when I take the lens off of my old Nikon here. Some of us have cameras which make use of a small mirror that hangs at a 45 degree angle just behind where the lens is mounted on our camera. This is a special mirror which allows us to see through the lens in the moments before we take our shot. The moment that we snap our picture, this mirror swings out of the way, allowing light from the scene to reach its way back into the camera where it can be recorded on the camera's sensor. If you have a camera like my Nikon D800 here, then most of the noise that you hear when the camera clicks is coming from the mirror flipping out of the way and back down again, as you can see here. This reflex motion of the mirror gives this type of camera part of its name, Digital Single Lens Reflex, or DSLR for short. So-called mirrorless cameras, like my EM1 Mark II, actually rely on a digital signal being fed from the camera's image sensor onto a small electronic TV screen inside the viewfinder, or the eyepiece of the camera. There's still single lens digital cameras, but without the reflexing mirror. The lack of the reflexing mirror has one unarguable advantage, and that is that it's much quieter to shoot with than any DSLR, as you can see here. Now there's one more mechanical aspect here which I think you'll find quite interesting, and that is the camera's shutter. Hanging just in front of the camera's sensor is a special shutter mechanism which allows us to control how long the sensor is exposed to light. This is fantastic for two reasons. We can control both the brightness of our shots by lengthening or shortening the amount of time that this shutter stays open, and we can also achieve some pretty amazing creative results by altering our shutter's speed for different creative effects. Let's take a look at a couple of example images. What you see here is a great example of what can be achieved with longer than usual exposure times. In this case, photographing with a third of a second allowed the seawater in the scene to move over this rocky shelf in front of me, and that slow shutter speed helped blur its movement. The result is quite a bit more interesting than a perfect freeze frame of this scene in the Faroe Islands. This example is quite the opposite, and I've actually frozen the scene completely by setting my shutter speed to a 2500th of a second. The stop action effect is very effective in this case because it gives us the chance to study all of the amazing details in the riders and horses, not to mention the big blobs of falling snow which are being scattered around by the powerful movement of the racers. Sometimes it's a lot of fun to play around between the two ends of the spectrum, finding just the right shutter speed which allows you to both freeze and blur movement in the same scene. In this case, opening the shutter for 1.6 seconds gave my assistant enough time to move a colorful fabric around in the background, creating movement in the shot, while my model did her best to hold perfectly still. It's a fun effect to practice the next time you're shooting a portrait. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if so, you can really help us out by liking, and don't forget to subscribe for our next helpful tip. And we've got a lot more waiting for you where that came from, so head on over to viewfindermastery.com where we've got full-length tutorials, thoughtful feedback, and a really fun community of photographers that are waiting for you to join in. And while you're there, go ahead and download our free Top 10 Purchases Guide if you'd like some advice on must-have gear items that won't break the bank.